Patty Sue, I'm glad we've got this opportunity to talk with one another because, uh, and also to have it videoed, our conversations together over, gosh, now eight eight years, easily, uh, easily eight years, and that's with um, what became known as the Congregational Vitality and New Start Network, and we we actually did a lot of work. We were doing a lot of work together, moving toward providing uh, resources for congregations, for rostered ministers, and and lay leadership. And of course, then there was the pandemic, but we're picking back up. But our conversations never stopped. True. Um, and one of the things that you and I were talking, uh, I guess a month and a half ago, we talked about how ministry today is filled with challenges. Rostered ministers and lay leaders often work tirelessly to try and find strategies to effectively minister within their context. We know there's not a one-size-fits-all, but we also realize that when we share God does some wonderful things when we're sharing uh, what we are doing within our context and sharing the good news of Jesus. Just to get us started, share, share with, with us the things that are happening in that Providence, the things that uh, you and the lay leadership are doing at Providence that's, that you're seeing that's beginning to be or making a difference. Sure. Um, we have really been trying to recognize that we are in a a location that doesn't garner a lot of traffic. And so how do we reach out into the community so that we are making Christ known? Our purpose at Providence is to make Christ known by developing prayerful disciples. We know that. But how can we make that expansion um, to the next step? Uh, the average church is worshiping between 25 and 50 people on a Sunday. We're right in that group. Um, and we have a preschool. So what we decided was we were going to we would invest in Google Ads, for example. Mm. And that would give an opportunity for somebody who is perhaps doing a search for fun activities in the fall, and then something would pop up. And we have seen exponential um, attendance in those outreach activities at Providence. For example, our, our last year, our fall festival, we had over 200 people. Our trunk or treat, we had 240. Uh, when we had our um, Easter egg hunt this year. We had 125 children and 100, 127 children and 100. And I think it was 25 parents. So those things are happening, and we are trying to find ways to translate that to um, relationship with Jesus. We're, we're kingdom building, uh, attempting kingdom building in everything that we do. So we always ask as a council, is this part of the mission? Is this part of our purpose? Mm -hmm. How is this going to grow the kingdom? One of the things that you discovered in, in some of the uh, learnings that you've been um, picking up is the one about prayer. Yes. And, and that your, like, uh, your social media, mm -hmm. uh, how important that is. And it's not so much you talked about the activities you were offering, the fun things, but the one that really connected people, as you were pointing out about connecting with Jesus, share the one about prayer. The number one way in which congregations are gaining gaining membership or gaining people into visitor, I want to know more about your place, is prayer. And that can be done in two ways. And it, it, it's really effective, for example, on Facebook, um, where you can introduce yourself and, and say, Hi, I'm Pastor, I'm Patty Sue, Burton Pye, and I'm the pastor at Providence, and I know you're having some struggles, and I would love to be able to pray with you today. If you have a prayer need, please um, put it in the text thread here. And so they, they message you, and then I can then contact them back directly with an actual prayer on an audio so they can hear the voice. And from all of the research, that kind of way in which to engage, or even on your uh, website, however you want to engage. Mm -hmm. uh, that particular um, way, connecting with a person who has a need so that they feel as though somebody cares about them enough to pray for them, that brings them to say, I want to know more about that. I want to know more about that church. I want to know more about those people. And they will come, and they will come and, and hear more from what you have to say. It's meeting people. What I'm hearing is that where it's meeting are. people where they are. Exactly. And and it's also allowing them a place, even though it's through um, these different platforms, it's still a way in which they can connect, um, sometimes anonymously, 
Yes. Um, and, and yet, like you said, there's, they pick up that someone does care that someone within the community is interested in how they are doing. And I, I have to share this story and everything. I've, I've been to uh, a couple of our congregations recently in South Carolina, uh, where I was the, the guest uh, preacher for the day. And um, I went in, and these two congregations, it was absolutely amazing because I'm going to share with you, it's, they're doing some of the same things you're talking about. And I, I went uh, on uh, July 28th, it was in a congregation, and I was expecting with July 28th that the attendance would be very low. It's summer, vacations, those kind of things, wrapping up the summer as school was starting back earlier than, than it was the previous year. And I go in and it was packed. It was packed. And I started hearing stories as I was leaving about the things that individuals and the congregation as a, as a community were doing and the emphasis was not on the program. The emphasis, the emphasis, the stories were about the number of people that they were connecting and inviting them or connecting them with Jesus, inviting them into a relationship with Jesus, and then also discipling them to grow deeper in that faith with Christ. And, and that was one congregation. And then uh, early in August, uh, another congregation, the same thing, packed. I mean, it was, it was amazing. And it was made up of people of, uh, of every, both congregations, by the way, every age from, from those who are retired to children, um, to um, they're, uh, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, everyone uh, represented um, straight, gay, um, it was just amazing to see all of uh, this, this community coming together in one place. And again, ask the question, or I was hearing stories, but then I also asked the question, what are you doing that others could be doing? And the answer was simple. Invite them to know Jesus. Exactly. Invite them to know Jesus. It, can you say more about um, how you're doing that at um, Providence at the moment? Well, there's two things I'd like to say. One, statistically, we know that uh, Gen Z and the Millennials um, are the ones that are least likely to show up in our congregations. And I'm talking about the mainstream denominations. They don't seem to have a problem in the non-denominationals. But the reality is they are searching for a relationship. They're searching for more meaning in their life. They're searching for Jesus. And if we don't help them in that relationship, somebody else will, hopefully. We, hopefully they will. And so what we have to do is we have to find ways to connect and make, um, make a pathway for those people to feel not only well uh, invited, but also welcomed once they show up mm -hmm. so that you can then have that conversation. So if you're not preaching about Jesus, if you're not offering Bible study, if you're not offering ways in which to engage um, the needs of those families, for example, so that they can all come into a better relationship with Jesus. I think that's the piece that's been missing uh, in many ways. And I feel like, from what you've said, that the two churches you went to certainly are doing that. We're trying to do that as well. We do that with our preschool families, and we're trying to make that a more dynamic reality uh, in our our little scope of, of the world in, in Lexington, uh, South Carolina. But um, I think that the best way to do that is to be genuine and to truly care enough to say, can I be praying for you? Is there something you need? What can I do to help to help you in your family circumstance? How can I help you in whatever walk you're on? And, and I'd like to travel with you. I'd like to be on that journey with you. I think that's part of perhaps what you're asking. And this is it is, and because I I think this is going to lead into what we're wanting to mm -hmm. share with everyone who tunes in to to see this is. Uh, building a dynamic ministry is something that um, our Congregational Vitality Network, uh, the, the bishop, uh, you and I, sat down and looked at. Um, in other words, is this something that can be learned, that we can um, help people to experience, those who are leading, so our, right. our rostered ministers, our lay ministers. Um, these are concepts or principles that that we can learn and begin to apply them in a way that that does create, as we said, uh, effective, not just simply effective strategies, but faithful uh, strategies. Yeah, and it's not about growing your congregation. It's oh. about kingdom building. 
And if we can just kind of take off the hat of, I don't want to share this information because then maybe the church down the street's going to do the same thing and then they might be getting people that we want to get. I mean, we've got to take those barriers down because this is for the sake of the kingdom of, of Christ. Well, well let's, talk, let's, talk about, let's talk about what we're going to offer. I'm going to ask you to kind of take everyone through what we're going to be putting forth with uh, building dynamic ministry that's going to be offered. Uh, to the South Carolina Synod for rostered uh, lead ministers and uh, lay, lay leadership throughout South Carolina. So um, just walk us through what we're going to be offering up. Okay, so we're going to start off with um, how to help your congregation define its, its purpose and its mission and its target audience. If you don't know why you exist, um, that's a problem. And I asked this of my council, and the uh, I got a lot of different answers, and I said, well, I really feel like we exist to help people know Jesus, not just about Jesus. And that was kind of our, our baseline. And then we looked at what's our mission and purpose. So how, how are we going to do that? Now, what we're going to be uh, developing prayerful disciples, well, how are we going to do that? Um, we looked at something that we have never looked at in the 20-plus years that I'm aware of, and that is, what are your core values? We talk about our purpose, but we don't talk about our core values. And so we're going to look at that. We're going to have a workshop that shows you how to take your uh, congregation through that. Uh, we're looking at how the congregational profile, um, who are you in your area? We're a very small church, and we're surrounded by several larger churches. And you need to know who it is that you can be inviting. What sets you apart. Exactly. Why come to Providence? Mm -hmm. What is unique about us? Um, same thing with all of the churches, and that's part of um, coming up with really who your what your profile is. And I think that's going to be very helpful for, for the congregations to look at. And also, um, just marketing versus ministry. Our websites are designed for marketing, if they're even that good. And let's be real, they're not that good. We could do better. And so for those people who really want to do ministry, you can't just talk about the stuff you're going to have offered, like worship, here it is, the time. Something about the worship needs to be in there. Maybe some pictures. Mm -hmm. Something that engages to show the ministry instead of just the marketing piece. If you're not showing ministry, then you're not differentiating. And uh, then finally, just financial resources that are available to congregations to help get them farther along in their social media quests or in their... Um, Web design. Some of the congregations in our center don't even have a website. And Neil's behind the camera, of course, uh, with us today, but he always uh, brings this in about our presence. In other words, people, uh, that's before people come and visit you, that's the first place they're going to go. They're going to visit you online. And he, he has always lifted that up mm -hmm. uh, when talking to uh, rostered ministers and, and leaders throughout the throughout our church. There's over a million Google searches every single day mm -hmm. for looking for a church. Over a million. Over a million. That's nationally. And if you're not on the front page, you're not going to be spotted. If you're not in the top three, nobody's going to go to you. And it's also, but it's also, it's not just simply, but when they click on there, it needs to make a difference in what they're learning about. What you. are they going to find? Are they going to find a dynamic ministry that's there? Or mm -hmm. are they going to find a church that just gives you the bare minimum? So this would be a great time to talk about uh, one of our guest presenters. Um, so I'm, I'm going to let you yeah, share. Yeah, I, I'm super excited about it. This, um, there's, we're having Bobby Williams. Uh, he is 20 years in ministry. He started off as a mission developer. Uh, he's up in Tennessee. He is uh, working with um, an organization called Church Fuel. Would you put that up for a moment? This is an organization that uh, is near, near to his heart um, and all, also mine. It is a group of pastors helping pastors. And, and I know that we, we like to talk about the rostered leaders, but this is pastor-focused. Um, but it really can go beyond just the pastor. It's really for ministers of word and sacrament, word and lay, service. Lay or roster. Or lay. Yeah. All, of, all of the above. And so these pastors have put forth time and effort. And Bobby, in particular, is one of the head coaches. And he does a dynamic job in teaching. And if you need um, 30 minutes of his time, he, he will schedule a time with you. And so Church Fuel is the organization that we're going to be 
talking about for a few minutes here because he is with that group in addition to having his own church. Can you pull up his website, Neil? He is with Ridge Church in Tennessee. And as you can see um, from his website, this he, he's pr put into practice what he's, what he's teaching. Um, he has the, why do we exist? Why, we are, exist to help people follow Jesus. And then he lists here some information and he wants to have people when they get to the very front page of their website to be able to plan a visit so that they can engage immediately and find out how to disciple them. And all through his website are discipling opportunities. And so it goes back to what you were saying earlier with some of the churches here in South Carolina. Right, and, and that I love that. We exist to help people follow Jesus. In other words, it's put out there so that if I'm clicking on that website, I'm going to know what your congregation is about, right? And, yes, exactly. And what you'll find with almost everything in church fuel is that there is a Jesus focus. There is a Jesus focus. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, I believe you took one of the classes he offered, which, you, which uh, he yeah. will be sharing with all of us, which is on... Uh, creating that uh, purpose, in other words, understanding your purpose, uh, understanding your, your mission, uh, creating those values. What's, what is it that you're not going to compromise on? What's important mm -hmm. to you as that, as that community and, and as leaders? Um, so this is, uh, so is going to be great to have the, the expert, not the only expert. The, the expert of teaching, but also one who is, as you can see, is doing it, and that is always helpful. And I think that makes the difference. It's not just a talking head. Mm -hmm. He is not disconnected. He is, he is absolutely connected in congregational ministry and in training. And I think those are just two wonderful gifts that he brings to the table. So how do you become a part of building a dynamic ministry and sharing wisdom and resources? It's very simple. Uh, all you need to do, registration is open. You uh, go to the South Carolina Synod website, sccynod.com. You will be able to find Building a Dynamic Ministry. Register there. The cost is $150 per congregation, and each congregation may have up to three participants for Building a Dynamic Ministry. So we have six sessions, and they're going to all be done via Zoom. They'll be offered twice each day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, so that you'll be able to attend. Uh, what's important to know is if you do not register, you cannot have access to this information. But the incredible opportunity that is before you is that because of your mission support and because of this ELCA grant, the Church Fuel Organization has offered us the opportunity for 20 churches in our Synod to be able to go ahead and have full access to their website and their resources. So that would be for classes and coaching and, and uh, just a myriad of resources. Uh, you can talk directly to Bobby. You can talk to any of these coaches. And it is only though available to 20 churches. So we don't want you to delay in registering because if you are interested in this, this is a $950 value that is going to be paid by the Synod through these two opportunities. Um, with the grant and with the mission support so that you don't have to pay for it. So you can go ahead and begin to have that dynamic ministry that you are longing for or even just improve it that much more. There's no downside to this at all. So in other words, register now. Exactly. Exactly.